um, food on you as it flies out of my mouth. <laughs> Charge it to my head and not my heart. Amen. Yeah, I got it. That's your spot. Yes. I have sit down. Oh, this is, this is, my, this is my ministry. Okay. Pra pra praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And Amen. praise the Lord. Um, phones are off. Phones are on vibrate. Guys, as the Lord allows, we're going to look at a few verses. And we're going to be in the book of Romans. We're going to be in Romans chapter 12. But, but our reference scripture is going to be coming out of chapter 11, beginning at verse 25. The, uh, George, did you want your phone? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Romans, chap um, Romans chapter 11, beginning at verse 25. And Paul has, has been writing, actually, through the last couple of chapters, and in particular in chapter 11, he's been speaking about his heart for, for his, his brethren in the, in, in the flesh, Israel. He really had a love for them. And, and, and though his ministry was to Gentiles, he had a love for, for, for his brethren in the flesh, the Jews. And in verse 25 of chapter 11, if you're with me, please say amen. 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 He writes here, he says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. And he goes on, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And listen, what Paul knows, and he's helping us to understand, that, that Israel for right now, the, after since Christ was on the earth, that they have been put in the back, on the back burner for a bit. God's not forgotten about them, still has a promise in, 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 in view for them. But, but he's saying that because of their denial of Jesus Christ, right. that God turned to the Gentiles Amen. and has blessed us with salvation. And, and he mentions here the fullness of the Gentiles. And what we know is that when the last Gentile is saved here on earth, that God's going to call us out. Amen. And, and yes. listen, we're going to meet Amen. him in the air. Yes. And then we'll start the seven-year tribulation period. Yes. And during that time is when Israel, the remnant of Israel, those who will be saved will come to faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we know, because Scripture tells us, it's going to be a hard time to believe, but then they'll realize who Christ truly was, that he was who God said that he was. In verse 26 it says, And, and so all Israel shall be saved. And, and, and a lot of times folks will see that, and they think that all the Jews are going to be saved, even those that are living now. And look, there are some that come to faith in Christ over here and over here. But for the most part, they're in denial still. Yes. But all Israel who will be saved will be saved. And Amen. that's what Paul is saying here. Yes, he says, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness, it says, from Jacob. And again, pointing to spiritual Israel. For this is my covenant, verse 27, unto them, when I shall take away their sins. And, and listen, that's a loose quote out of Jeremiah 31. And, and listen, what God says is that I've not forgotten them. They're on the back burner. And, and listen, I'm taking care of them even now. And in the fullness of time, when I say so. Amen. Their eyes will be opened and they'll realize Jesus as Savior. Amen. He goes on. He says in, in verse uh, 28, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. And, and listen, what he's saying is that right now they're diametrically opposed to the works of Jesus Christ. And, and it was done. That blindness was done for our sakes, for the Gentiles' sake. Right. And, and then God turned his attention to us. He said, they're enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, look what he says here, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Amen. And listen, what he's saying, that God has a plan still for them, mm -hmm. and he speaks about the fathers, and, and in fact, he says here, plural fathers, and he's speaking about the patriarchs, about Abraham, Isaac, and, and, and Jacob, that he made a promise to Abraham, and, and guys, he's going to fulfill that promise yes. in the fullness of time yes. that God says so. He says, for the gifts and the callings of God, and I love this, are without repentance. In other words, what God says he will do, he's going to do it. Yes. And many, many times, listen, we have men, we want him to do it and want it right now. Look, many times we'll bow to pray, 
And when we put our head up, we're looking for what we just prayed for to be right there. And listen, yes, he did say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I will provide for you according to my riches and glory. But it's also in his timetable and not in ours. Right. In verse 30, he says, for as ye, talking about Gentiles, in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. And listen, God turned his grace toward us, and I'm oh so thankful he did. No. All of us were former sinners. Yeah. All of us were knee deep in sin. Yes. And, and somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart concerning not just God, but Jesus Christ, his son, and gave you an understanding of the finished works that he did, and that it was not just for the sins of the whole world, but it was for your sin. Personally, Amen. Amen. And you bow the knee and ask Jesus in Amen. as the Lord led us to do such a thing. He says in, in, in verse of, uh, 31, he says, even so, have these also now not believed. He's talking about the Jews. He said that through your mercy, they also might obtain mercy. And, and look, he's saying the tables are we be turned. That right now we are God's people in regard to his son and to finished works and been salvation. But there's going to come a time when they too will come to faith in God. He's not forgotten them. And by the way, we ought not forget them as well in regard to prayer and even for the nation Israel. Amen. Amen. In so verse 32, amen. and I love this. He says, for God hath concluded them all in my unbelief that he might have mercy. Look upon all. And he's pointing to Jew and Gentile. And, and listen, the only reason we got here in this same place is because God had mercy and his grace, hallelujah, Amen. forever changed the hearts of a sinful man. He goes on in verse 33, he says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how, look, unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past Finding out. And, and listen, I love this, man. I, I got saved when I was 36 years old. And, and I had been studying and reading and, and trying to get a, a grasp and understanding of, of God's book ever since then. And, and I've come to an understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit of many things in this book. But what Paul is saying is that, guys, when you think you got a handle on it, it's even deeper than that. Right. Amen. And listen, there's not enough time in life for me to get a handle on it. And the only time I'm going to understand it all is when I get to heaven. And even then, it will take eternality for me to grasp who Jesus Christ truly is. Wow. Yes. And what he has done for me personally. Amen. Man on my way to hell. And he snaps me out. Yes, amen. Praise God. Smoke still on my clothes. <laughs> and hallelujah. I, and, and listen, yep. I, I, I got the call he had on my life. It was bucking and kicking because I was too happy doing my own thing. But ultimately, his will was done. Yes. And he blessed me. Hallelujah. Amen. With salvation. Amen. He goes on in verse 34. For who had known the mind of the Lord? or who had been his counselor. And, and listen, we already know no one has. And, and in fact, he said something similar to Job and, and, and had to read him the right act in, in regard to who, who he was. He asked Job, where were you when, when I hung the, the, the stars? And, 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 and where were you when I did this or did that? Right? And he is so deep, hallelujah, and, 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 and so awesome and so expansive that we'll never get the whole just of just who he is. Right. And, and that's why it ticks me off sometimes when I hear somebody say, well, you know, I knew the man upstairs. Well, you must be talking about in the top of your house because you can't be talking about our God or the big kahuna in the sky. And, and look, you must be talking about some bird flying around because that's not my God. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And with a reverence him and treat him as such as our all Amen. and all. Verse 35 says, who had first given to him, and it should be recompensed unto him again. Again, no one. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, Paul says, to whom be glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Amen. And, and by the way, in the Greek or the Hebrew or Aramaic, all things still mean all things. And, and guys, I read verses like that and it helps me to realize that as much as my ego was all big and, and, and bolsterous uh, prior to salvation, I've come to the realization, and I, I pray you have as well, that it ain't about me anymore. Right. That is all about God through his son, Jesus Christ. And, and listen, he just allowed me, he made me privy to some of his goodness and some of his greatness and even some of his truth, but it's not about me and it's not about us. But it's all about our Savior. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Guys, please be prayerful with me as I preach around the subject, doing ministry God's way. And Father, Father, as we dive deeper into the 12th chapter of this book, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll hide me, your speaker of the day, behind the cross of Jesus Christ. And, and Lord, allow these words to be words that you have handpicked for this congregation. And Lord, as they leave my mouth, Lord, first make me first partaker. Allow it to trickle into my heart. And then, Lord, allow it to find the heart and the place of each and every one here so that you can grow us and bless us and minister to us as only you can. As we pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake, amen. amen. And amen. Paul continues in chapter 12 in verse 1. And he says, I, I beseech you, therefore, and a couple of interesting words, he says in the King James beseech, and, and listen, he's saying, I'm strongly urging you, and he also said, therefore, and rule of biblical thumb, at least with me, is when I see the word therefore, I, I need to know what is therefore, and in essence, he's saying, with everything we have saw in chapter 11, and even beyond, he said all that, and because of that, he goes on, I beseech you, therefore, verse 1, Brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. And we'll pause there for a second. We know during the, the time of the Old Testament, we know that during the time of the sacrifices, they would present what? An animal. But he was dead. But what he is saying, that we who are alive evermore and, and forever in Christ, that we are to present our bodies this thing that we walk around in, this thing we take care of it, and we present it to God. And he goes on. Amen. Present our bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy. And listen, the only way we can be holy is that we need to be in Christ. Period. Amen. Acceptable unto God. And then he has the audacity to say, which is your reasonable yes. service. Amen. And look, I read that, is that the least that we can do? And then I, I wake up in the morning, look, sometimes, on, like today, I, I'll have an agenda for tomorrow and the day after that. I've already written down, I got to meet with this one, I got to talk over here, I got to go to the doctor, so whatever I got to do. And when, in reality, I need to be saying, Lord, when I wake up in the morning, what would you have me to do? Amen. And listen, God bless, I do it sometimes, but I don't do it all the time. And many times I have already set my agenda and I hit the road running to do my thing. And many times I wonder, how come this didn't work out? Or how come that didn't work out like I thought it should? And the question is, is that what God would have for me on that day? Man, we need to keep loose accounts with the things that we do. And ultimately, when I put my agenda together, at the end of it, it needs to be, but Lord, ultimately, your will be done. Yes, sir. And not mine. And if in the midst of me doing what I'm doing, God wants to change something. Maybe he wants me to call somebody. Maybe he wants me to pray for somebody. Maybe he wants me to go another route or go somewhere else. Maybe he's got a message for someone, because, but because I hadn't talked to him, I hadn't presented my body and my agenda to him, I missed it. About a year or so ago, we were doing three services on Sunday. Was doing one at 10.30, was doing one at 1 p.m., and was doing one at 7 p.m. And at the time, 
it just seems like that that's what God would have me to do because the doors were opening up. But much of that work, I never actually submitted to him and got the okay from him. I saw the open door, I went through it, and I was be preaching to beat the band. After about three or four months, I realized that Brother Ralph was getting a little tired. And, and listen, a, as you see me preach here, I was doing that in each one of them services. And, and, and man, I was literally being worn down. And then finally, the Lord got my attention and said, Brother Ralph, who told you to start these other services? <laughs> I ordained and, and amen you for the first. And, and listen, even the second one was already going. He said, but who told you to do this last service? And in reality, guys, I had to admit nobody except for me. And, and listen, in God, in his graciousness, he, he had somebody from that last service come to me and said, uh, Pastor Ralph, you know what, this is not working. The people really aren't wanting to come out, and it's only us, these two families or whatever. And, and I think maybe we should just let this go for at least for right now. And in reality, it was the answer to prayer. Because I don't know if I could have did one more week. And, and literally, the God, God showed mercy Amen. and allowed his grace to get me off the hook in that regard. And, and listen, it happens to me, it happens to you, it happens to all of us. And we need to submit what we do to the Lord. And things will go oh Amen. so much better. Uh, I heard uh, uh, my brother George was talking about going to school. I, I know my brother D just, just graduated school. And, and there's some things that I wanted to do extracurricular in regard to understanding, uh, in regard to, to, to education, that kind of thing. But, but guys, what I know is that, that, that although a, a door opened for me to do something, just because it's open does not necessarily mean that God would have me to step through that door. And, and I'm going to say it like my mother used to say it to Amen. me. When I would go to do something that she had already tried and it didn't work out, she would say, take a fool's advice. <laughs> Make sure that where you're going and what you want to do is what God will have you to do. Because otherwise, it's not going to work. Amen? Amen. He says in verse 2, I'm sorry, look at verse 1 again. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then he hits us in the face with number of verse 2. He says, and be not conformed to this world. And he's talking about this world system we live in. He said, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and by the way, he's talking about renewing our mind with the things of God. And the only way I know to do that is, is to dive deep into his book, to listen and, and to understand and to pray about godly things because it needs to be renewed from the past and brought into the new of the newness of life that I have have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Already got a master's in sin. And, and in fact, some of y'all probably got doctorates in sin. <laughs> you, you don't need to renew that one. You need to renew it from that. And, and you need to fill it and feed it with the Amen. word of God. Verse 2, he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye look may prove. In other words, showing what you really are. <coughs> He says, what is that good and acceptable look? And perfect will of Ralph? Is that what it says? No. no, the will of God. As I renew my mind and he begins to show me more and more about himself and show me more and more about myself, I can divest myself of self and grab a hold, hallelujah, of the doctrine of Christ and walk therein as opposed to walking in my own steam and in my own way. He says in verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God 
it says, had dealt to every man. Look, the measure of faith. So whatever I got in regard to faith, it's been given to me by God. And, and, and listen, it gets grown, or it grows as I dive into his word, as I study his word. And, and listen, you hear many times that, that folk are saying, I'm a self-made man. There is none. <laughs> because we all got here by the grace and blessings of God anyhow. Amen. That natural birth is a miracle of God. Man can halfway physically uh, 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 express how it happens, but that miracle in regard to that soul, it comes from God. His miracle. No self-made man. And, and listen, those guys that, that listen, they pulled their, their boot, they brought themselves up by their own bootstraps, had no boots or no feet unless God had given it to them. <coughs> None of us are nothing without the Lord. Amen. He says in verse 4, for we have many members, and he's talking about in the body, he's talking about the physical body here. But he's also showing us how the body of Christ ought to mimic the physical body. He says, well, we have many men, members in one body. And all members, he said, have not the same office. Can we amen that? Amen. amen. Your hand does what the hand does. Your feet does what the feet does. Your knees and on and on and on. And, and by the way, there are some churches that feel like everybody has the same member or gift. And that's where he's going here. Some churches believe that everybody can prophesy. Some churches believe that everybody can speak in an unknown tongue. And, and listen, many times they will do that, and they all do it at the same time. But if, look, if, but if, if, if the body of the physical body, if we all do the same thing, we'll all be hopping around on one leg, and it would be a sight. And God's helping us understand through Paul that no, there are many members, and we have many offices and uses of these members. Mm -hmm. In verse 4, he says, for we have many members in one body. And the members have not the same office. So we bring, he said, so we being many are one body in Christ. And everyone, he said, member of one another. And, and listen, he helps us to understand that we're one in Christ because of his finished works. And we are all members one of the other. Frank, where were you born? Atlanta, Georgia. When, where? You were born in Atlanta? Yeah. Damn right. John, where, where were you born? Cambridge, Massachusetts. D, where were you born? Virginia. All y'all born different places at different times to different parents. And, and listen, but what he is saying that in Christ, that though you're from that bloodline and that bloodline and that bloodline, that you have been grafted into God's bloodline, and now, hallelujah, you're now my brothers in Christ. Yes, amen. Yes, sir, amen. And listen, he's helping me and helping you to remember that, guys, we're going to spend eternity together. I need to learn how to get along with, hallelujah, my brother right now. Amen. And listen, brothers argue sometimes, fuss at each other sometimes, but you don't mess with my brother. Because if you mess with my brother, then you mess with me. And, and listen, if you mess with my brother, in reality, you're messing with God. And he says, I'm not going for that either. He says, so we being many are one body in Christ, and everyone members of one another, Having then, then gifts, there's no way I'm getting through all this, but I'm going to try. Having then gifts, differing, it says, according to the grace that is given to us. He says, whether well, prophecy, and, and listen, he's talking about to speak forth, that's what that word means. Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering. And listen, like I was telling you about all those services I was doing, I ought to have been waiting on the Lord. Instead, I went and grabbed hold of it myself. He said that we're on ministry, we're to wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it, it says, with simplicity. And by the way, there are many folk that have the gift of giving, and I'm not getting ready to ask for no, nobody for no money. But I knew a guy that had the gift of giving, and, and, and he went one time, and he knew I had a, a financial need. 
And he went and borrowed money from the bank. And he gave it to me. I said, brother, I can call his name Gene. I said, man, I don't know what I can give it to you. He said, Gene, I just know you need it. And he just, just would do stuff like that. And I would pay him back drips and drabs. And, and then one day I said, Gene, I'm going to pay you all your money. And he said to me, what money? <laughs> and I said, the money you borrowed and you gave it to me. He said, I don't even remember. And he says, you know what I'm going to do, Brother Ralph? I'm going to settle this once and for all. He says, that debt is paid. Consider it null and void because I don't even remember what it was. And listen, he says that as a giver, give it uh, 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 without form or fashion. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to close with this because I'm just playing out of time. But I was in the church and they were taking an offering. And as the plate went around, it got to one row. And this basketball player had brought all his family in there. And they were putting money in the plate. And he said, whoa, 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 no, no, put your money in your pocket. And he pulled out a bankroll. He says, I got this. Now, that wasn't done with simplicity. And I guess he thought he was buying a, a seat in heaven or something. He put all that money in there. Now, the pastor didn't turn it down, but that's not what he's talking about when he says, give it with simplicity. And I got to keep going for a little bit more. He, he says, on, 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 on he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. In other words, if you're a leader, you got to do it with stick to him. There's no uh, getting off the battlefield. You keep going as long as the Lord would have you. He says, he that show mercy with cheerfulness. He says, let love be without dissimulation. In other words, don't let it be hypocritical. If I love you, it ought to show. And, and listen, even when I say it, and then you leave, and, and I get behind your back, and I say, I can't stand him. He's saying if you love, you're supposed to love with God's love, and it ought to be real. And not just heard, but shown and felt. He says, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave, he's talking about stick to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. And, and listen, this brotherly love, he's talking about that phileo love, the Greek word that uh, 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 the city of Philadelphia gets, the city of brotherly love they get their name from. He said that it ought to be real. And, and he ends verse 10, he says that we ought to be preferring one another. In other words, guys, as Christians, as believers, believe it or not, as ugly as you guys are, <laughs> when we could not get together to meet. Man, I missed you dudes. I really did. Yeah. And, and listen, I, and, and now we're back together. We're getting stronger and, and more and more coming. I, I actually missed you. And, and listen, he said, prefer one another. Not so much because we all come here, but because we're all believers in a like mind and serve the same Lord. And hallelujah, like I fellowship with you here at Men in Motion. I can't wait to fellowship with you in heaven. And I know one day that's going to come to pass. Amen. 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 So if, just in case the Lord decides to take me home when I leave here, I want all of you to know I truly love you. Amen. And I'm not going to say something else when we get out of here. I do. And, and listen, I'm going to close with that because we're just out of time. It, 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 I'm just out of time. But before or after I close in prayer, whoever is sitting at your table, and if it's really in your heart, let them know that you really love them. Amen. From your heart. Yes. Now, you might not like them. <laughs> but let them know that in Christ you have a love for them. Yes. Because he has loved you, that you can love them, Amen. and they can love you Amen. back. Amen. Amen. And Father, um, we just thank you for the time that you allowed here at this place called Men in Motion with all these guys. And Father God, um, had to cut the sermon short, but guess what? You knew all about it and yeah. even knew I was going to speak when I did not. But Lord, you worked it out and I thank you for that. And, and, and Father, as you have given me love and, and because you first loved me, I love you as well. And, and Lord, you've given me the ability to love all these guys in this room. And, and Lord, they love me back. I know they do. And, and I pray, Lord, that it not just be lip service, but Lord, that it's heart service 
as we're out and about. And, and listen, one of these guys come to my mind, or if I come to one of these guys' mind, that they'll pause and pray a prayer for me as well. We thank you, Father God, for the blessing of knowing you. And, and I thank you, Father God, for the blessing of knowing each and every one of these guys. As I pray in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. I love you. Amen. God bless you. 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 God bless you.